Uh, progress report, how practice is going, especially for your position group? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I think practice is going really well. Um, the thing about the offensive line group this year, there's so many new guys in the room. And um, <clears throat> throughout spring and throughout summer, I feel like we've really gelled well. And, um, you know, under the leadership of Coach Thornton, he's just pushing us to be our very best every day, and he doesn't accept anything but the highest quality, the highest standard. And so I feel like um, we've really taken on the role of uh, being the leadership of the team, and I feel like practice has gone really well so far. How's camp going for you specifically? Good, good. Um, <clears throat> the last couple of times I played football hasn't been so great. Um, and I got hurt in the Missouri game last year. And then um, spring ball, I practiced four or five practices and then hurt my other elbow. So, you know, just kind of getting back in the groove of things, getting back to playing football, um, you know, figuring out where my body's at um, and how um, I'm feeling relating to where, how I can play. And so um, just getting back in the groove, but I feel good. What's it like having Jarquez back there for practice today? What's it like blocking for a guy that's that powerful? I mean, anyone wants Jarquez back there. I mean, Jarquez is just phenomenal, and it's it's awesome to have him back. I mean, today he was making plays, and we went tackle. We tap. We went live um, the last period, and uh, man, it it was hard for those guys to tackle him. So he's phenomenal. Everyone knows that, and it's just awesome to have him back. I know there's been like a concerted effort the last few years. We haven't been great as a team as a line in short yardage situations. What are you guys trying to address this year so you're better on that third and short, fourth and short on the goal line, that, that kind of scenario? I think it's just a mentality, you know. Um, and as you see, everyone's big, everyone's strong. Um, and third and one, third and two, fourth and one, fourth and two, it just comes down to the mentality of we're either going to get it or we're not. And um, I feel like the offensive line this year has really embraced taking on the mentality of no matter what happens, we're getting it, you know, get it or die. So um, that's really the mentality we try to take on. Tate, how's the battle at guard going? There's a ton of y'all fighting for yeah. those two spots. No, there's, there's a ton of us, and I feel like that's great. You know, me, Jeremiah, uh, Muskie, EJ, Cam Stutz, all these guards that are battling uh, for the guard spot, it's awesome. And the thing about it is um, all these guys are super talented and – Competition does nothing but bring the best out of everyone. And so <clears throat> if everyone's bringing it every day, you can't just come in and take a day off. You have to bring your best every day uh, to make sure no one's pulling ahead of you. So I feel like that's what the competition has done for the guard position specifically, is just help us bring it every single day. You added some veteran teammates this offseason. Have you picked up anything from, uh, from some of the guys that came in from the portal? Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm getting old myself, even though, <laughs> even though I'm only going into my fourth year. But um, for sure, just the thing about the older guys is they know how grueling a football season can be, especially at this level. And so what I really pick up from a lot of these older guys is how well they take care of their bodies. You can come into practice every day and um, practice and then leave and go lay down in the, the lounge locker room for three hours until the next meeting but you're gonna feel like crap the next day. So just getting done with practice, going to eat, going to the training room for an hour and a half, really taking care of your body. That's what, you know, all these older guys understand is very important. And some of these new guys have to learn that. What is the process of gelling together with, with some of the, I know you, you played, at least in the parts that, that, that uh, we've seen, you played with, uh, with uh, Gunnar, Dylan, Avery, those guys. I, how, how do you start to build a unit with all these new faces? I feel like, a big part of the process of gelling as a unit doesn't happen on the field, it happens off the field. And I feel like this year with this new group of offensive linemen, that is something we've done well. In the spring, in the summer, throughout the whole time we've been together, we've really tried to hang out off the field, talk off the field, you know, just, just be real friends, not just friends because we have to be because we're in the same position group, but actually be friends and go to dinner together, go do stuff together. And I think, um, once you create a bond like that, like a friendship, it makes it so much easier to go out there and play for the guy you're playing next to. And I feel like that's what we've done a great job of. What have you seen out of uh, Justin Muskrat? How's he fit in with you as a group and uh, out there on the field, what do you see? Jaden's awesome. Um, I'm really proud of, uh, of what he's done so far. Um, you know, he played tackle at Tulsa, and so he is very athletic, and <clears throat> that is a super good quality for an inside guy. And um, the thing about Jaden is he brings it every day. He comes out of practice and he goes hard every rep, no matter what. 
And that is something that you want an SEC offensive lineman is going hard all the time. And uh, he really takes pride in being an offensive lineman here at Auburn. And uh, he's just done great so far. What can you say about Connor and, and the way he's prepared to step in possibly and plan to play as a, a really young guy? I can't say enough about Connor. I mean, Connor is Connor's awesome. A, he's a great guy. I love being around Connor. He's a great friend to have. I'm blessed to call him a friend. B, he's so smart. You know, I don't, he's a pilot. I don't know if you don't know that, but he's such a smart guy. He picks up the offense very well. Uh, he knows all the calls to make. And for a young, I remember me being a young guy, that was something that I struggled with, um, was really um, getting the offense, to da offense down. And C, he's a great football player. He's athletic, he's strong, um, and he can do everything that we have to do. And he plays super hard. So I can't say enough good things about Connor. And, He's got such a bright future here. He got play most of center. Sorry. Sorry. Does he play mostly center this camp? Yes, sir. He's playing mostly center this camp, um, but he can play either or. He can play center and guard, as we saw in the spring. You've had about four or five practices now to kind of feel out Coach Freeze, how he likes to do practice, kind of implementing his culture. Um, how's that process been going, and how, how are you enjoying camp? It's definitely faster, you know, than what we've had before. Um, previous years, we've been more of a slow pro-style offense, huddle up. Um, get a play, get the ball, run the play. But this is run a play, get the ball, run a play, get the ball, run, run the play. And so Coach Freeze is really pushing that tempo. And, um, and I feel like it's been going really well. And I feel like that's just the biggest adjustment is um, playing with the speed that Coach Freeze wants to play with. You mentioned the tempo. That's something that came up yesterday with Coach Montgomery, you know, the desire to, to play at a really mm -hmm. fast pace this year. What, what are the biggest challenges asked of the offensive line when, when a team wants to well, there's two pace. There's two things I think that's challenging and switching over to that kind of offense. A is obviously the conditioning. Um, you have to train your body to go at that, at that speed. And two, it's getting up to the ball as fast as you can and still making all the right calls and going to where you need to go, hitting all your spots. And so, um, and that just comes with reps. Getting really good at that comes with reps. But I feel like this office line, even in the spring and so far in camp, we've done a great job of communicating and um, playing with the tempo that uh, we're trying to play with. Tate, you've known him for like maybe a week now, but what have you seen out of Dylan Senda and what he's kind of brought to the room? Oh, Dylan's a, Dylan's a beast, man. He, like I said about, <laughs> I can say this about everyone in the room. He's a great guy and he wants to be, he wants to be really good. He cares and he's big, he's powerful and um, he's a smart guy. So. Um, like I said about Connor, I can't say nothing, enough good things about Dylan. Uh, Terry, you what kind of left or right guard mostly? Uh, left mostly, but you know, so pretty much, pretty much all of them. So who's mostly working with your left guard? And who's mostly working with right guard so far? I can't. Um, me and Jeremiah have been going um, at left guard, and at right guard, it's been um, Cam Stutz and Muskie. Good enough shakers to cover. I tell you what, that was just a, that was just a little bit, but it was so hot out there when I did that that day. I felt like I was actually working. So my displeasure in my face it was kind of real because it was it was hot. Anything else for today? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about uh, Jeremiah Wright. I, I know he was in the yellow jersey most of spring. Mm -hmm. how, how is he performing now? How's it look like? Him? I feel like Jeremiah's in the same boat as I am. Um, I was hurt in the fall. Um, only played four games. So didn't play the rest of the fall. I didn't play the rest of, I only practiced four or five times in the spring, didn't play the rest of the spring. Same thing with him. He was hurt, didn't really practice in the spring. So I feel like with both of us, um, it's just a matter of getting in a groove. And I feel like offensive line play is, is almost like getting in a groove because offensive line play is so unnatural and you're hitting every play and it can be uncomfortable. But when you kind of get in the groove of playing football, it makes it easier. So I think that's just the biggest thing for me and him both is getting back out there, getting in the heat, getting down on the line and taking the reps. And I feel like um, we're adjusting well. Uh, you, you mentioned the excitement of having Jarquez back. What, mm -hmm. what can you say about the rest of the running back room and what they've done this offseason so far, Damari and oh, uh, Jeremiah? Yeah. Oh yeah, I love the running backs. And don't leave out Sean Jackson. To, we, Sean Jackson was making plays like crazy today. But no, Damari, Jarquez, Sean, Jeremiah, Justin Jones, all of them, everyone in that room is making plays and everyone's doing a great job. And um, Coach uh, Cadillac's a great coach for those running backs. They all love him, they gravitate towards him. And so 
he's got those guys playing extremely well in both the run game and the pass game. They're blocking their tails off too in the pass game. So um, the running back room is really performing, and, and I expect them to have a huge year. Tate, when do you think uh, Coach Shorten is going to want to narrow it down to the starting five on the offensive line and then start picking out number six, seven, and eight? I think Coach Thornton is going to narrow it down um, <laughs> once he feels comfortable in the five guys that can um, do what he wants to do correctly, the technique, um, um, the scheme, everything. So, um, you know, still early in camp, but uh, once he figures that out, um, I think he'll start to narrow it down. And it might not just be five people. It might be seven or eight people that can do it. And... Um, you know, as we've seen in years previously, the coaches will go about go about that how they will. But yeah, um, you know, you got to eventually narrow it down soon. So we'll see. Do you think there could be some playing time for the, the number three, number four guards, possibly? You know, the rotation could, could you know, stay uh, you know, stay, stay pretty big. You know? Well, anyone that knows anything about SEC football is when have you ever seen five guys play every snap the whole year? So. There's not going to be five guys play the whole year. Someone's going to have to come in and play and play at some point. And as we saw last year, I mean, we got pretty we got pretty down. So um, that's what Coach Thornton preaches too: is everyone's got to stay ready. Everyone's got to be uh, ready for when your name's called. And he pushes everyone so when their name is called, they can play. What do you tell people when they ask you about Coach Thornton? What, what it's been like so far? I, people ask me, "What what's your coach like?" I said, "He's awesome. I mean, he's a young guy. He's only 30 years old." Um, he relates to us well, and what I like about Coach Thornton is he can be one of the guys, he can be cool, he can be funny, but he coaches you really hard, and I appreciate that in a coach. He comes in every day, and he gets after us every day, and some people might say he chews us out, but not, he's just getting after us, and he doesn't accept anything less than the standard of what Auburn football's office line is supposed to be like, and that's the way it's supposed to be, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you.